In the last video, we looked at impulse and momentum. In this video, we're going to look at collisions and the conservation of linear momentum. Let's just recap impulse and momentum. Impulse was given as either force multiplied by time, so I is equal to FT, or we could write impulse as M, which was the mass, multiplied by the final velocity minus the initial velocity. These were vector quantities and the units we used were newton seconds. So this is impulse. Momentum was given as the product of mass and velocity. And again, this was a vector quantity and the units were newton seconds. If you haven't seen the previous video, please check that out as this now is going to be key to showing the conservation of linear momentum. What I'm going to do is take two particles, A and B, and put them on a smooth horizontal surface. We're going to have a collision between the two. So here is A, and I'm going to put A just here, and B is going to be just here. So what I've got here is a before shot, and below I'm going to have now an after shot. So this now is after the collision. I'm going to put some information on these, and we can say now that before, so let's write this here, before we will have now A, which is going to have a mass, and we can write that as MA, and we've got B, which will have a mass, and we'll call that MB. This is going to be after the collision. So drawing these little diagrams helps us now with the calculations that we will look at later. So we've got MA and we've got MB. If we put an initial velocity on each of these, we could say now that we've got UA and UB. So let's put those there, put something like that. So that's just there. And we can write now that this is U, so the initial velocity, so UA, and we've got UB. Afterwards, we're going to have VA and VB. So after the collision, we can place this on like so. So let's go ahead and write this on. And this will now give us, put in these here, we can say that this is going to be VA and this one will be VB. We will now state that UA is going to be greater than UB, such now that we catch up and have this collision. Now, when they do collide, they're going to be in contact for a very short period of time, and we will call that time t seconds. We know by Newton's third law that they will exert an equal and opposite force on each other. So the force that A exerts on B will be equal and opposite to the force that B exerts on A, such that we can write now that F A will be equal to minus F B. So these are equal and opposite forces. These are acting for t seconds. So we could simply write now that Fa multiplied by t will be equal to minus Fb multiplied by t. So they're in contact for the same amount of time. If we look at Fat and minus Fbt, we can see that that looks like impulse. So what I could do instead is rewrite this. Now I've got Fat. Instead, I could simply write that this is going to be MA multiplied by VA minus UA. So using the definition now of impulse, I know that impulse is force times time, so FAT could be written as MA multiplied by VA minus UA. And that will be equal now to minus FBT. So instead of writing FBT, using the second definition of impulse, we can say that this would be MB multiplied by VB minus UB. So all I'm doing is using the definition right here. What I'm going to do is expand this out, and then we'll have now MAVA minus MAUA, and that will be equal to minus M. B, V, B, and then we're going to have plus M, B, U, B. Let's do some rearranging. If I add M, B, V, B to both sides, we've got M, A, V, A, plus M, B, V, B. And if I add now M, A, U, A, we're going to have is equal to M, A, U, A, plus M, B, U, B. What does this mean? Let's go ahead and highlight what we've got here. If we read what we have here, this now is the mass multiplied by the velocity of A after the collision. This is the mass of B multiplied by the velocity of B after the collision. 
Now, when I add these two together, that will be equal to the mass of A multiplied by the initial velocity, so before the collision, plus MB multiplied by UB. So the mass of B multiplied by the velocity before the collision. So we can see now that the total momentum, MV, will be the same before and after. And this defines the concept of the conservation of linear momentum. So total momentum prior to the collision will be equal to that after the collision. And that is what you're going to state time and time again when you do these problems. Total momentum before is equal to total momentum afterwards. So in this case, we're looking at the conservation of linear momentum. And in our work, we would now say conservation of linear momentum. This momentum will be preserved unless an external force acts on these particles. So here now is our definition. What we're going to do in this video is work through some basic examples. If you want to picture this in real life, think about a snooker ball. So one snooker ball hitting another one. If you want to think about it as two trains on a train track and one drives into or goes along into another one and they move away together. If they move away together, we use the term coalesce. And we'll look at that as we go through the video. But this is the basic concept now of the conservation of linear momentum. We define these two particles, A and B, to have initial velocity UA and UB, and then after this collision, VA and VB, and we show now that the total momentum is going to be equal. So momentum is conserved after the collision. Let's go ahead and work through some very basic examples of this. In later videos, we will look at exam style questions, but for now, I just want to get some basics down so we're comfortable with this topic. So what we've got here is two particles, A and B, of mass m kilograms and 2 m kilograms, respectively, are on a smooth table. A moves with a speed of 4 meters per second directly towards B, which is at rest. As a result of a collision, A is brought to rest. We need to find the speed of B immediately after the collision. So with all of these problems, I like to just sketch this up. You certainly don't have to, but it might help you out. So what we'll have then is a before shot. So this is going to be my before shot. So we've got A and B. And then afterwards, we're going to have A and B. If these were coalescing, i.e. coming together and moving off as a single object, as it were, then we could just model this up now as one particle. For now, though, we've got two. So what we've got then are the following. And I like to put the arrows on. I like to put the arrows on anyway. I appreciate B has no initial velocity as it's at rest. I still like to put them on. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's put these on afterwards. In terms of the direction of your arrow, if you're unsure, your calculations will tell you whether the particle has changed direction or continued in the same one. And we'll look at that one shortly. So what we've got then is this is before and then we have after. So we're going to have just here, this is going to be A, so let's just put A here, and this one is going to be B. So we've got a mass of M, so let's put M here, and we've got a mass of 2M. So 2M, we've got M, and we've got 2M. So the initial velocity of A is going to be 4. So we've got 4 metres per second, and then this one is going to be 0 metres per second. It's at rest. We're told as a result of the collision, A is brought to rest, so we'll put this down here, and we'll have 0 metres per second. We need to find the speed of B immediately after the collision. So if we just call this now V metres per second, now I've chosen this to be the positive direction. Clearly in this case, we can see now that we're going to be going in this direction right here. Often you won't be told, but if we got a negative value, it would be going in the other direction. So what I'm going to state then is the conservation of linear momentum. So we've got conservation of linear momentum. So what I'm looking at is the total momentum prior to the collision. The total momentum is going to be now the mass times the velocity for A and the mass times the velocity for B. So we can say now that we're going to have 4 multiplied by M plus now the 0 multiplied by 2M. And that must be equal to the total momentum after the collision. So we're going to have this one, which is going to be 0, multiplied by m. And then we're going to have now v multiplied by 2m. We can see that this is independent of m. So we can divide through. It's independent of mass. So what we've got then is 4 plus 0 
will be equal to 0 plus 2v. All we need to do now at this stage is simply divide through by the 2 and we can say that v is going to be 2 meters per second. So that now is using the conservation of linear momentum to find now the speed of particle b immediately after the collision. So nice and straightforward, we plug the numbers in, we've stated the conservation of linear momentum and gone ahead and solved. OK, let's look at another one. We're told two particles, A and B, of mass 2 kilograms and 3 kilograms respectively, are moving in a straight line on a smooth table. A has a speed of 3 metres per second and B has a speed of 1 metre per second. The particles collide and coalesce. That means that they come together and move off. So we can see this now as a system. We're asked to find the speed of the combined particle if A and B are originally moving A in the same direction, B in the opposite direction. We're given here speeds. When we're dealing with momentum, velocity is absolutely massively important as we're going to assign a negative or positive sign to it. So let's start with A. So what we'll have then is a before and an after sketch. And I'll do this twice to give you a bit of practice. Clearly you could use the same uh, information if you wanted. What we've got then is A, so here is A and here is B. So we've got A and B. What we're going to do is just combine this afterwards. So let's just make that look a little bigger. And now A and B are going to coalesce and move off together. So let's put some arrows on and we will do this. So initially what we want is they're moving in the same direction. So we'll take left to right to be positive, really doesn't matter. And then we'll do that like so. So let's go ahead and put that on. So we can label this up. So this is going to be the before shot. So before. And then we're going to have now after. So before and after. We've got now on A, we've got a mass of 2. And on B, we've got a mass of 3. So this is 2 kilograms. And this is going to be 3 kilograms. Therefore, their combined mass will be 5 kilograms. So what we've got here now is the following. We've got 3 metres per second, so before 3 metres per second, and 1 metre per second. Afterwards, we don't know what it is, so we're going to call this now V metres per second. So stating again, it's massively important that you state the conservation of linear momentum. This was one of Newton's findings. And essentially, you must put this in your work to show what you do. So let's now look at the total momentum prior to the collision. Momentum is just the product of mass and velocity. So what we've got then is 3 multiplied by 2 plus now. Now I've taken this to be moving in the same direction. So this is going to be positive. So what we're going to have then is now on here, we're going to have the 1 multiplied by the 3. And that must be equal to the total momentum afterwards, which is going to give us now the 5 multiplied by V. So let's go ahead and see what we've got. We've got 6 plus 3 will be equal to 5v. So we can say now that 9 over 5 will be equal to v. So we can say that's going to be 9 over 5 metres per second. So let's put that in. 9 over 5 metres per second is now the speed that the particle particles would move off with if they coalesce. Now let's, in fact, I'll just use this one right here. Let's say now that these were moving in the opposite direction. All we would need to do is now spin this round and we'd have to make this minus. So these are moving in the opposite direction. When we're talking about momentum, we do have to give this now a negative sign. So what we've got then, instead of our calculations here, let's go ahead, we can write now that 3 multiplied by 2 so that now is the momentum of A prior to the collision plus, and we have to be careful here, minus 1 multiplied by 3. And that will now be equal to 5 multiplied by V. So just plugging the numbers in, we've now got this is going to give me 6. And this time we're going to have minus 3 is equal to 5V. So we can say 3 over 5 will be equal to V. So we can say that this is going to be 3 fifths of a metre per second or any other value that you want. So that's what's going to happen. So if we're coming in the other direction, clearly now this velocity is going to slow down. So a nice straightforward example of considering now the difference in speed and velocity. In this particular case, if you were unsure which direction the, the two particles were going to move in, it doesn't matter. We just define it to be V. If these were moving in the opposite direction together, our answer now would be negative. 
So I've defined now the directions these way, uh, and, and essentially we're moving from now in the direction A, B of our final one here, but if it isn't, then all we do is get a negative answer. So if you want to spin that round and call that negative, you'll end up with negative three fifths, which tells you it's going in this direction right here. Okay, so two fairly straightforward questions on conservation of linear momentum. In the exams, often they're more involved, and in later videos, we will look at those. Uh, let's have a go at another one. Okay, a gun of mass 6 kilograms fires a bullet of mass 30 grams horizontally with a speed of 400 meters per second. We're asked to find the horizontal speed of the recoil of the gun. So initially, this doesn't look uh, much like a conservation of linear momentum problem. Once you've done a few of these, they're fairly straightforward. Let's go ahead and model this. So in terms of our picture, we don't need the line here, but it might help you out. What we're going to have is the following. We're going to have now the gun and the bullet beforehand. So we'll put that just there. So this is going to be before. So let's just put that there. So we put before. And then we're going to have now the situation afterwards. So the situation afterwards, I'll model this up. And these aren't massively accurate, but it will give you some idea of what's going on. So what we're going to have then is the bullet in one direction. And we're going to have the gun in the other. If we look at the combined mass of the gun and the bullet, we're going to have 6.03. And we need to be very careful right here. So we've got now a 30 gram bullet and a six kilogram gun. So the combined is 6.03. This is going to be six. This is going to be 0 0.03. So we consider now two separate particles and then one. We can see quite clearly that the initial velocity is going to be zero. So we can put this on now, that this will be zero. So let's just put zero meters per second. And then we've got now these two down here. And I'm going to model this up. So if you've ever seen a gun being shot, if you've ever shot a gun, you'll recognize now that if you're holding that in the shoulder, that's going to kick backwards. And that's a recoil of the gun. The bullet is going to be going in the opposite direction, we hope. Um, otherwise there's a, a few problems. So what I'm going to say, that this is going to be now, and I'll just call this VG. So this is the velocity of the gun, and that's going to be in the opposite direction. Then what we're going to have here is 400 meters per second. That is going to be the bullet. So we've got our system here, and then we've got the two particles. So stating now the conservation of linear momentum, and we do that in each of these questions, we can say that the total momentum prior to now the gun being shot, we're going to have now 6.03 and multiply by zero, which is quite clearly going to give me zero. And that's going to give me now six multiplied by minus VG as I'm defining this now to be going in the opposite direction. So we've got minus VG multiplied now by six. And that is going to be added to, so let's just move that across so we can squeeze this on. Uh, Let's pick that up and just move that. There we go. So let's now go ahead and we can add to this. Now, and this will be a positive quantity. We're going to have now 0 0.03 multiplied by 400. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we've got. We've got zero. We've got now minus six VG with v, the VG being velocity of the gun. And that's going to be plus now. We've got 0 0.03 times by 400, which is going to give me 12. So rearranging, we can see that VG will be equal now to 12 over 6. So let's write that in. And we can see now that the velocity of the gun, the recoil, is going to be equal to 2 meters per second. So another straightforward problem, all we're doing is using the conservation of linear momentum and stating that. So there's a brief introduction. Let's go back and just clarify now if we have these two particles. So we've got particle A and particle B. The total momentum prior to the collision will be equal to the total momentum after the collision. The only time it will change is if there's an external force acting on either of these particles. We've shown that now by using our definitions of impulse and momentum, and we've worked through some basic examples. In the next few videos, we will look at some exam-style questions involving impulse, momentum, and the conservation of linear momentum.